Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be Game 2 between Jedi 1 and Crane, part of VSL Season 13, Group B. Game 1 going to... Je uh, going, sorry, going to Crane. After some plays. Is this Revolver? Forgot to look at the map. Yep, this is Revolver, which actually is kind of... Out of all of the matchups, I think ZVZ and PvP are the matchups that get influenced the least by this map. Revolver changes the dynamics of everything. Bottom left hand corner, we have Crane, by the way, starting as the yellow Protoss. Really, yeah, it shifts absolutely everything because of the very odd natural expansion. I'm going to pull it up again just because I feel like ranting about how interesting this map is because you have this... You have this ramp leading out here. You've got this gap over here that kind of odd minerals in the way. Um, so you can see where early game pressure can get punished very, very easily. But once you have secured additional bases, I think this is kind of the why it has the name Revolver. Because once you establish additional bases, like kind of attacking left to right and going across, you know, kind of going the long way around, it's going to be interesting actually having northern spawns like this. Being able to walk across these ramps it allows the game to be a little bit more aggressive. But point being, once you get sealed in, once you have your natural expansion, potentially once you have the third base, those are easy to hold. So it ends up being a little bit more macro oriented. But once you try to move out from there, you oftentimes end up sealed up or potentially trapped inside your, your base, your bases. So I think Revolver across the board ends up with more macro style play. Two gate opener once again for Jedi 1. Didn't pay off for him in game 1. We'll see if it pays off game 2. Crane with an excellent defense. And honestly, this is a map that has uh, ramps to work with. So I would not be shocked to see Crane defend this as well. However, this time Jedi 1 is going to get first scout. I believe that is going to provoke Crane to build a zealot a little bit. Well, maybe not. Already has plopped down that cybernetic score. Thing is, is there might be an adjustment for Jedi 1 and he might pump a few more zealots as well. I also don't know what the lag is like between these two guys. It is possible the lag played a significant factor. Crane poking away at that corner. He's already scouted bottom right. He's making his way to top right. Still no gas being grabbed from Jedi 1 after the uh, well, let's see if he grabs it now. After the initial zealots, looks like he's going to go ahead and gra grab that gas. So it's going to be the similar build order to game 1. Again, I feel like that put him in a bit of an economic deficit. Jedi 1 getting a, a decent amount of harassment with this. Dragoon a little bit delayed for Crane. And that's actually going to be significant considering what he's rolling up against. Even those few seconds can matter. The Zealots marching down bottom left. And this has not yet been scouted by Crane. This is unfortunate for Crane. Last scout and going up against an aggressive build. Dragoon about halfway finished. He wants to be able to hold that ramp and might even have to... We'll see how it plays out. Cybernetic score about halfway finished. It looks like we have some later. No additional Dragoons, or sorry, no additional Zealots being produced. And now, and those Zealots didn't even register on Crane's screen. The Zealot actually engaging the probe. Shield battery now being dropped to try to defend against this. A little bit of an overreaction potentially. A looks like there was a manor pylon along the lines as well. The Zealots quickly able to dispose of that Zealot. So now they have an in-base advantage. It's going to take a long time for Dragoons to evict these three Zealots. In the meantime, Crane losing probes and precious mining time. Second Zealot being built. He's trying to get another gateway down. The probes trying to group attack, and this is going to be a fast one. And I feel for Crane in this one, because that was just last scout and just walked right by those Zealots. But right now, his economy shattered, and it looks like it's going to be a quick GG. You already have 20 probes, just to 11 on the opposite side. Jedi 1 with a dominant lead, and this shield battery is going to do nothing for him as far as a follow-up. I don't. We'll see what Crane can do to sneak back in this match, and he also doesn't even have access to his full mineral patches in the midst of this. So now options for Jedi are completely open. He can go ahead and grab his natural expansion. He can go ahead and continue to be aggressive if he wants. Siddle of a Dune dropping for Crane. This is a common... It's kind of the Protoss emergency mode, right? It's like when all else fails, go DTs. I think that might be the play here. Range is finished for Crane. Still sitting on 13 probes. Still sitting on a single gateway. Looks like he is continuing to produce probes uh, to try to... So he's not just pausing production altogether. More Zealots being built for Jedi 1. 
and two more zealots behind this. He is getting the robotics facility and potentially an observer to follow. I'm not sure if I like this play from Jedi One, actually. Looks like he's going to press forward, potentially be aggressive, but it's a closer reinforcement point. Yes, he has a production advantage, but I'd almost want him to, to go ahead and get that observer up. He's going to try to take the long way around with these four Dragoons. This is still a high ground advantage, though, and that's also bought time for a fourth Dragoon, potentially, to join the fray with the misfire chance. I think Crane actually might be able to repel this easily. However, Jedi One, I guess, just wanted to take a look at that natural expansion make sure that Crane didn't take it. Holding his ramp currently. Jedi One opting not to take his own natural expansion. Maybe wanting to wait for observers. In the midst of it. Dark Templar. Going to be on the way after this Dragoon is finished. Wait for that to be... In fact, it's already queued up. Second gateway being plopped down. But yeah, all Jedi One has to do now is make sure he has that observatory. It's there and make sure he yeah, kind of keeps the observer in this area and then grabs his neck his nexus behind it and keep producing probes. Stay on top of the macro. The one advantage of DTs for Crane as far as a follow-up is that does create, until additional observer, observers are created, that does deny a decent amount of information. I also like that Jedi 1 at least, I don't know that he needed to send that many Dragoons, but it would have been nice to see him kind of peek up there. Uh, I don't know, with a Zealot, something like that. Whatever. I digress. He's a good player. Uh, was able to confirm, essentially, that no additional Nexus was there, and that they gave him a really strong idea of what he's going up against. Robotics facility, so potential drop for Crane. As far as a follow-up, I like that, especially because observers can't be everywhere at once. Nexus now being grabbed at the natural expansion. Additional gateway being plopped down. First observer, or sorry, first observer already out on the field. Second observer on the way. Just needs to hold this ramp position right. Perfect timing. Is that our template even to get wiped out? That would be, because Crane wants to keep this alive so that Jedi 1 doesn't get too aggressive in the field. And actually, he's already marching out. Jedi 1 playing very aggressively here. The Dark Templar are actually sneaking back around. He's going to find an empty ramp. And yeah, there's a second observer. But ooh, that was risky. All right, so infield might actually be able to just sneak around. Okay, now getting into the main, and this is going to result in probe kills. So one probe down. I think that was a misstep from Jedi. Two probes... And with this, all of a sudden, Crane right back in it. So yeah, he's down a Nexus, but he still has more DT that he can field. He's still running around with this DT in his base. Looks like Jedi One trying to deny that natural expansion, but the probe count has evened. And he's still not mining at his natural, grabbing that second gas. So Crane making a match of it. And honestly, I feel like big missteps here from Jedi One. Citadel of Dune being built. A Reaver being produced to follow this up. Potentially to uh, blockade this. This time, Jedi One going to have full eyes, though. Doesn't know that there's additional... Well, you know... He, I'm not sure if he knows if Dark Templar might have snuck out on the map or not. Eggs being... Splorched. That's a good word for it. Three gateways behind this. Jedi One still with a sizable economic lead, still with a sizable production lead. Crane still has work to do. Jedi One sneaking back ahead in that overall probe count, actually backing up and letting go of that natural expansion. I think realizing that Crane is opting to be aggressive. And as long as he holds, yeah, he should have a strong lead moving into the mid game. Looks like that Reaver, yeah, just moving forward to go ahead and clear that. The Observer sweeping back around to get a good look. I would not be shocked yet. It looks like Jedi One is already in position to grab his third base. Not in position to really even be concerned about that. Fourth gateway plopping down. Templar archives of his own. Already has Dragoons in position to deal with a potential shuttle. So Crane's options. I think he might even have produced the shuttle more or less as a defensive play rather than an aggressive play. We'll see if he decides to move out with it. Looks like he is starting to... Exit to the bottom right-hand corner. He might try to go the entire map around. Could disrupt that 1 o'clock location. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of Dragoons... This is an interesting... This is an odd play for Jedi 1. He, moving a lot of Dragoons the far way around himself. Not sure why he opted uh, to do that. Maybe just trying to... Just making sure that he wasn't getting flanked, potentially. Odd play. Maybe to anticipate a potential shuttle route. Knowing that shuttles were in, knowing that there was a reaver and a shuttle potentially incoming. 
the shuttle making its way across, it looks like we know there's not a map hack because Jedi One missing that shuttle barely is gonna that probe's gonna spot it. They're trying to end around and make their way back. Crane gonna see that third base. No Dragoons in position at the main anymore. Photon Cannon warping in, but potentially not in time. Jedi One fleeing with the probes at the main. The Dragoons engaging, but this is a speed shuttle. Drops off that Reaver. Able to get some probe hits. That second... Yeah, getting a decent amount of probe kills. But... I don't know. Feels a little bit too little too late, and Jedi One still holds the overall economic lead because he still holds that 12 o'clock base. More eggs being evacuated. Jedi One, I love this play from him. Moving these probes around the map to make sure that Crane has not snuck a sneaky additional expansion somewhere out in the field. Second base decently saturated. Second gas is up for Jedi One. He has some Dark Templar of his own now out in the field. He has an economic advantage. He has an army size advantage. He's got a worker advantage. Going to have an upgrade advantage very shortly. And as far as raw production, he's going to have an advantage there too. Catching Crane in the middle of movement with kind of a staggered line. Jedi One can afford to lose troops here in this back and forth. It looks like Jedi One running up to the high ground to get that mischance. And Crane realizing GGing a little bit early. I've actually seen this in the past from Crane. Uh, early GGs. Out of frustration. I, I think that will get better in time. I hope it doesn't turn into Idra effect for him. Uh, but game two goes to Jedi 1, which means we're going to go to a game three between these guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.